you'd only need to throw 17 cats into a black hole to power Norway for a year. Hi, I'm Tyler False. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a heavily requested video by Minute Physics called The Unreasonable Efficiency of Black Holes. Let's take a look. E equals mc squared, the most famous equation in the world, describes the fact that anything with mass possesses a huge amount of energy, in principle. Like, like a five kilogram cat style. has enough energy in its mass to power the entire country of Norway for a year, if only the energy could somehow be fully <laughs> extracted a cat from the cat. Pure energy. But it turns out that if only extracting energy from mass is a very hard thing to do. Antimatter yes. is the most efficient way of extracting energy from mass, since if you collide a cat with a cat made of antimatter, 100% anti of the mass of the cat and anti-cat will be converted into energy, powering Norway for two years. But the universe has almost no naturally occurring antimatter, so it's not a practical choice for generating energy, since you'd first have to use a lot of energy to make a large mass of antimatter. I've looked up the, the price of antimatter, and we're talking trillions of dollars per gram. And so even making an anti-cat, or what would be the equivalent mass of an anti-cat, you're better off just building a bunch of nuclear power plants, which isn't a bad idea. Since we can't use antimatter, there are basically three options left to us. Chemical reactions, nuclear reactions, and gravitational reactions, like matter falling hmm. into black holes. To start, chemical reactions are so bad at extracting energy from mass that we don't even Fire. think about what they're doing <laughs> as converting mass to energy, even though it is. As an illustration, reacting a balloon of hydrogen and oxygen gases creates a nice big explosion, but the end products of the reaction only weigh half a nanogram less than the initial reactants, of mass which amounts energy. to a measly 0.0000001% efficiency of converting mass into energy. At that rate, you'd need 10 billion cats to power Norway for a year. And this is, so, he's just looking at the mass energy conversion. That's just, so that's just energy, just heat is what he's talking about. If you're talking electricity, that's a whole nother process that's going to involve even more efficiency reduction. So take this small number. So assume you make this cat reactor, for lack of a better word, you put it in a typical steam cycle, the same ones that you would have for a nuclear power plant or even a coal or a natural gas plant. Steam cycle where you have a boiler or your reactor that um, heats up water, boils it, turns a turbine, turns a steam, a steam generator, exhausts to a condenser, and then goes to feed water back to feeding the, the reactor or the boiler. That whole process right there is about... 33% efficient, and that's actually decently good. I think the best possible, the uh, Carnot efficiency, if you will, is 40. Yeah, d divide, divide that number by three to see what you're really getting as far as electricity. And then you're going to get into things like transmission lines, which we're going to shave off a couple of percentage points here and there, depending on where you want to put this cat reactor. Because, I don't know about you, but I don't really want a cat reactor in my backyard. <laughs> so it's going to need to travel some distance over long transmission lines, and there's going to be a little bit of efficiency loss in those uh, high voltage lines. So just keep that in mind. Here, we're, he's just talking about heat. Nuclear reactions are a lot more efficient, sure but still are. pretty mediocre on an absolute <laughs> scale. Splitting uranium-235 into krypton and barium converts only about 0.08% of the uranium's mass into energy. So he's talking about splitting it into specifically krypton and barium. It's a probability distribution of what the uranium-235 is going to split into. Yeah, krypton and barium are possible. It's somewhere with an atomic mass number between like 80 and 100 for the small one, and somewhere between like 130 and 150 for the bigger one. And he's also showing you can get some more neutrons out of it, and that's what's important for the uh, sustaining a, uh, a nuclear reaction. Fusing hydrogen into helium, like in the sun, Retina converts fusion. about 0.7% of the hydrogen's mass into energy. At that rate, you'd need 150 cats to power Norway for a year. This is- A sun made out of cats inducing fusion. 
So the sun is super efficient at inducing fusion. We haven't found out a way to, uh, relative to um, what we can do on Earth, which is one of the reasons why you don't really see fusion as much on Earth. I've talked about this in more detail in other videos, but he's saying that, yeah, even, even with the sun being as a, fi a particularly efficient way of generating nuclear fusion is really not that efficient when compared to the matter-antimatter reaction. Black holes come in. They're about as good as it gets in our universe for extracting energy from mass. Which may sound weird because, as you've probably heard, nothing can escape black holes once inside. But the efficiency of black holes comes from what stuff does while falling towards them, before passing the no turning back point of the event horizon. Anything that hmm. falls in a gravitational field speeds up, gaining kinetic energy, I'm and winded. if it then crashes into something, it can convert that kinetic energy into heat. That heat can then radiate away as infrared radiation, slightly decreasing the mass of the object. For planets and stars, yeah. this conversion of mass into energy is pretty pathetic. An object <laughs> falling to the surface of the yeah. Earth releases only about one billionth Meteor of its shower. mass sure. as energy. That's basically as bad as a chemical reaction, and explains why we don't think of falling to the ground as a way of converting mass into energy. It's a really bad way. But black holes have something yeah. special going for them. They are stupendously small. A black hole with the mass of the Earth would be about two centimeters across, providing way farther for an object to fall. And since gravity gets stronger That's and stronger true. the closer you are to an Good object, getting energy objects out of that, falling though. into black holes get accelerated to ridiculous speeds. Specifically, an object falling all the way to the event horizon of a black hole will have kinetic energy equivalent to roughly half of its E equals mc squared mass energy. Wow. However, if the object continues to fall into the black hole, all of that energy will be stuck inside yes. the black hole. The way to go actually out of the convert horizon. mass into energy that goes out into the universe is to have the object slowly spiral into the black hole, crashing into other stuff on the way, heating up, radiating that energy away, thereby losing mass and speed, slowing down more, spiraling to a yet lower orbit, and so on. I know this is a purely theoretical video and a thought experiment, but good luck basically capturing all of that thermal energy around there. You kind of need to, to trace it with, I guess, the equivalent of a Dyson Swarm, which you're better off just building one of those around the sun and going and using solar, essentially, in, in space. It's an interesting idea, though. You don't, you don't hear people talk about gravitational energy that much, and I think I remember a couple of sci-fis about using black holes to generate electricity and them being even more efficient than than nuclear fusion or antimatter because apparently antimatter is still very expensive in the future for some reason so i guess efficient's not the right word but more cost effective to use black holes than antimatter i'm it involves future technology so i'm not going to question it but it's it's interesting to see hypothetical technological scenarios all the way down to the innermost possible orbit. And this is exactly what accretion disks around black holes do. So how good are they at converting mass to energy? Well, a for a non-rotating black hole, the innermost possible circular orbit is actually three times farther out than the event horizon. And in order to spiral into that point, an object has to convert around 6% of its mass into energy radiated away to the outside universe. After that point, if it loses any more energy, it'll plunge down into the black hole, and no more energy can be extracted. But at this 6% mass energy conversion yeah. rate, you'd only need to throw 17 cats into a black <laughs> hole to power Norway for a year. Compared to the 0. 000 cats, 000 energy, 000 energy in Norway. one percent okay. efficiency of chemical reactions and the 0.1 to 0.7% efficiency of nuclear reactions, 6% for a non-rotating black hole may seem pretty good. But rotating black sure. holes are even better because of how they bend space-time. Yeah. They literally All that angular drag momentum the to things play with. orbiting them along with them in the direction of their rotation, which means the innermost possible orbit can be much closer to the black hole. The details depend on how fast the black hole is rotating, but for a very quickly rotating black hole, the innermost possible orbit coincides with the event horizon, instead uh -huh. of being three times farther away. And the event horizon itself is half as big as for a non-rotating black hole. Combined together, this means that matter falling into rotating black holes can convert as much as 42% of its quick. mass yeah, both into of those energy, factors. or equivalently, uh -huh. you'd only need two and a half in-spiraling cats <laughs> to half. power Norway for a year. So if you really want to take advantage of E equals mc squared and convert the mass of an object into energy, don't bother with chemical reactions or nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. Just throw it into a black hole. That is so goof. Yes, uh, regularly in, um, in discussing uh, nu nuclear reactions, we don't 
Don't always refer to it as mc squared, just refer to it as delta mc squared, because that you get the energy from that change in mass energy. Never really heard it explained that way in terms of chemical reactions, just because it's so insignificant, like you said. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how you would actually capture these things. Uh, they use... I've seen, again, I've seen some sci-fi with, like, black holes in this big containment field, but that also requires immense power to operate. So, it actually, they use something like a fusion reactor to provide your, your power supply for your black hole containment field to extract energy from that. In a way, that's actually not that different from how a nuclear power plant works, because you do need a source of electricity to run the nuclear power plant. A big load, for instance, being the reactor coolant pumps. It takes a couple of megawatts to run to run some of those, but it's ultimately to produce um, upwards of a thousand megawatts electric. So you're taking power from the grid. You're using some using something smaller, like a uh, like a natural gas plant, or maybe some renewables, some wind and solar in there to help get that nuclear power plant started up, and then the nuclear power plant becomes self-sustaining in terms of what it can do. I wonder if you could possibly see nuclear power in the future, uh, maybe nuclear fusion, to be playing together with these black holes to get some sort of containment field slash extraction field. I'm just, I'm just spitballing at that at this point of some way to capture that energy from your black holes to power your big interstellar dreadnought or something's hyperdrive or wh whatever you're going to use this thing for. <laughs> that was fascinating. Uh, appreciate the recommendation. That's uh, my first time looking at one of uh, Minute Physics's uh, videos. Let me know if you, want, if you want me to check out more of their videos. Uh, this one was pretty good. I'm sure they got some other interesting content. I like their little writing style of uh, presentation. It's, it's pretty cool too. If you support cool new technology supported by nuclear energy, please join me on my journey to a clean, safe, sustainable, reliable nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.